Hello, my soccer universe. I thought I'd wrap up the Copa America a uh, similar way as I did for the Women's World Cup. Again, I hung what I have from the tournament, how it ended. Brazil ahead of Peru, ahead of Argentina. I don't have Chile, so you get only the top three up there. And given the relations between Peru and Chile, and Argentina and Chile, and my relationship with Peru, family, I'm not sure that a Peru, uh, Chile jersey is on the horizon. There well, isn't also really one that I want to have. Maybe except the one from Slayer. Who knows? Anyway, uh, Copa America. I barely saw a thing. I saw a um, little bit of the last group games. A uh, little bit of the quarterfinal. I saw the final. Mostly I saw highlights. From what I could tell, most of the tournament, it was a rather blah tournament. And it was characterized by... You know, the only one big star that was there was Messi, who didn't show up until probably the third place playoff. Um, Cavani Suarez were great at the beginning of the tournament. I think this was the other one. And, you know, Neymar was not there. And I think it was for the better for Brazil. Uh, I'm going to join the camp that Brazil is better without Neymar. There's something to discuss. Please drop a line below. I am a Neymar hater. It's not that I have uh, you know, big hate or whatever, I just dislike that guy. I just do that, I'm open with that. Um, I love him as a player, but to me he is he has reached a level of beyond Ronaldo. I actually uh, started to like Ronaldo in a weird way, uh, and now Neymar takes that spot for me. There's always a player that I <laughs> dislike. That would be a video, top 10 players that I dislike. Looking forward to that one. I uh, should do that one. <laughs> Maybe over the summer or something like that. We'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah. So as I said, uh, a little bit of absence of stars. Um, it was a group stage that had no bearing on how the tournament ended, to be honest. Except uh, how the bracket was set up. Um, and yeah. Poor play most of the time. Especially of the big boys. Brazil and Orange, Orange Argentina. Brazil showed once fireworks uh, against Peru, but um, it was always, I always was wa wa wondering, I mean, if you watch that Peru game and I saw uh, until it was 3-0, Peru really shot themselves in the foot in that one. It was more uh, a question of, uh, yeah, there were really some bad defensive errors and then Peru just gave in in, in, in a way and Brazil got uh, some leverage. Uh, but then, per but then Brazil follows up with a pretty poor showing against Paraguay against Argentina. They were not great, but they scored, and I think they did the same thing against Peru in the final. Um, yeah, that Peru made it to the final. I was happy as can be. Um, on the other hand, you gotta say, I mean, this was a side that only finished third in the group and didn't... I mean, they looked all right against Venezuela, should have gotten the win. They, of course, beat up on Bolivia, but then against Brazil, nah. Uh, then they only had a defensive struggle against the uh, might of Uruguay. And then there you go. Uh, it was definitely uh, interesting to see Peru then dismantle Chile. Chile, for a while there, I thought Chile will be uh, among the contenders again, uh, which would have bothered me in a way. Uh, to be honest, I really don't dislike Chile. If they play their great uh, soccer style, they are, one of, they are one fun side to watch. However, you know, they already won two tour two tournaments, and then this would have been a little bit too much, especially if they would have again played a final against Argentina, uh, which never was happening. For me, I think interesting, the car Cup America was very low from the beginning because the new Argentina is not going to do much. And, you know, uh, out of the family teams, Ar Argentina is my top three. Italy, Netherlands, uh, Argentina. Those are the three teams that I regularly support. And, yeah, in the end it is Brazil, although at the beginning of the tournament I would have bet on any other team than Brazil. I would have taken the field over Brazil. I thought that Colombia and especially Uruguay have better shot at winning it but hey 
Uh, they were eliminated with the penalty shootouts. Uh, for me, one big negative of that Copa America, and I think this has been before, is that the lack of overtime in the quarterfinals, which basically invites the underdog to just defend, defend, defend. Uh, the only game that did not go into overtime was the Venezuela-Argentina game, where actually I favored Venezuela. Uh, and they probably felt that way and went forward and then got caught by Argentina. It was not a convincing performance by Ar Argentina. Jersey-wise, uh, Group A was wonderful and the other two groups were so-so-so. And to me, I'm still a little bit miffed uh, that the Copa America needs to have the guest teams. And that because the Gold Cup is happening at the same time, the guest teams are Japan and Qatar, which have nothing to do with America. Uh, if it's Mexico and the US, Mexico, Jamaica, Mexico, Costa Rica, you know, take anything, anything from um, CONCACAF, that would make more sense. Um, I think, and I'm probably going to do a video on the Gold Cup, which I've been more or less ignoring, because I had already three tournaments to follow. The Gold Cup would have been just overkill. And of the f uh, those four tournaments, I think the Gold Cup was definitely the least interesting, I want to say. For sure, the least interesting. And also, uh, level-wise, I don't know. It didn't hold the weight to me. Uh, but I know it will be not good for small CONCACAF teams, but if you make a 16-team uh, CONCACAF Ball Copa America, I think that would be a great tournament. Um, and I think people would get behind it. I mean, the Copa America Centenario, that was a tournament that people got behind. So I actually would support, uh, strongly support something like that, because that would be a tournament that could rival the Euros. Probably the AFCON too, uh, although the AFCON is not rivaling the Euros at any stretch. But yeah, it was a Sola La Copa America mm, in the end, yeah. Brazil runs away winners. Um, is it a deserved winners? If I watch everything, probably yes. I mean, if Colombia cannot get past Chile, if Uruguay cannot get past, past Peru, those seem to be the two strongest teams. But, you know, if you fail on the penalty spot, I'm sorry. Um, then you cannot go on. Um, probably you are a victim of the format. Because if there was overtime, I think the approach of um, both, especially Peru, probably would have been a different one. But hey. So it goes. There were also some VAR decisions, I think, especially in the Uruguay-Peru game, where Uruguay thought they had scored and then was taken away by VAR a few times. Um, took a long time. The biggest thing was that in the first, in the opener, you could actually hear the referee talking. That is something that they should do for real. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the Copa America. Um, and I'm going to leave you, as I did with the Women's World Cup, with some impressions from the screenshots that I made. Let's run through the tournament again. Enjoy.
I hope you enjoyed this run through. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a few comments below uh, if you want to add something to this cup uh, to my review. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.